Hello there guys and welcome, it is Niran here and today it's time for me to welcome you back to yet another episode of our Wigan Athletic Road to Glory. This is episode number 20 of the series overall, of course carrying on with our Barclays Premier League campaign uh, that we have got started uh, at the moment. Obviously we finished the transfer window last episode making some pretty big signings. Uh, the likes of which you're seeing in the background in the squad report. If there's any players that you want to see in high detail, make sure to pause the video and check out their attributes. But yeah, making three signings, I do believe it was last episode. Uh, signing Rico Henry, as well as Andre Gray, and then also Adamola Luckman, uh, the youngster from Charlton. Uh, Andre Gray coming in as a improvement to the squad, really. And then Rico Henry and Adamola Luckman coming in as uh, sort of squad depth. Although, realistically, Rico Henry could overtake Rhys James... Uh, in terms of attributes in the squad. Nevertheless, here you can see what we're going to do today uh, in this episode. We've got two games to finish off in September, that being Southampton and Norwich in the BPL, and then three more league games in October. That's where we're going to end uh, the episode. So we're going to get through five games today. I'm only going to play two of them, because there's only two games that I really want to play, but in future, I will play more games per episode. It just happened to be that I only wanted really to play two games this episode. The first of which is Southampton. And going into this first game of today's episode, our strikers... I'm not really performing, to be honest with you. Will Grigg, Andre Gray, and Kemar Roof haven't scored yet this season. I suppose Andre Gray, it's understandable, because he hasn't been here very long. But Kemar Roof and Will Grigg are yet to get off the mark for Wigan in the Barclays Premier League. All of our goals have been scored by other defenders or midfielders, would you believe? Here is a squad in the background. Dominic Iorfer is still out with injury, uh, so James Bree is still in the side. But apart from that, it's basically the normal side with Kemar Roof and Andre Gray up front. But the first chance of the game going to the strikers for ourselves. And it has resulted in a penalty. Finally, some link-up play between our two strikers, this time being Kemar Roof and Andre Gray. Uh, Andre Gray finding Roof, who's then absolutely wiped out by Matt Target. Andre Gray will step up and take the penalty, but it is saved by our nemesis from Leicester Korea, this time in a Southampton shirt, Marcelo Groa, the Brazilian goalkeeper who can't stop having worldies against us. And there goes a big chance, goes begging, and now a big chance going begging for Southampton as Felipe Saicedo hits the crossbar from basically point-blank range. Oil Chan now going forward, finding some space, then pulling it back to Andre Gray, but Marcelo Groa is on top yet again, this time to deny Gray at the near post. Gray, though, running into the area. He's tackled by Virgil van Dijk. Gets the ball back. It's saved by Groa. Falls to Kemar Roof. And one of the scrappiest goals you'll ever see results in a goal right on the edge of halftime. Kemar Roof gets it in the end just purely by being a poacher and being in the right place at the right time. But Andre Gray just allowed to dribble through Southampton's defence. Awful defending from the South Coast side. But we lead 1-0 in this game into the second half. And uh, Jordi Klasi putting a ball into the box is deflected and found Stephen Davis, who is there to equalise, putting the ball into the bottom corner of Alban Lafont's goal. It's a shame, actually, because James Bree, the right back, did a really good job of blocking the cross. Very unfortunate with how the deflection works, though. We are, though, going forward again, and Marcelo Groa is saving again, this time from Mikel Duland after he was set up by Kemar Roof. Wonderful through ball. Uh, from the English striker. We're going forward again though with Kemar Roof who finds Bartosz Kapuska. Lovely dink ball over the top for Gray. And what a finish that is from the ex Burnley striker on the volley into the bottom corner. And it takes something to beat Marcelo Grow with a shot like that. 2 1 in this game after 63 minutes thanks to a wonderful finish from Andre Gray. And finally the strikers are delivering. Kemar Roof getting the first striker goal for our club just generally. A moment ago, and now Andre Gray adds himself to the score sheet as well, and that ends up being the winning goal. 2-1 the final score. Andre Gray gets man of the match, but an 8 rating as well for Kemar Roof. 7.7 .7 as well for Kapuska, and a good rating too for Naby Keita, doing a very solid job in that defensive midfield role yet again. But a very good result there. A 2-1 win against Southampton. A pretty challenging so uh, side, sorry, in this league. Uh, so we should be very happy with a result like that and a win against a team like that. But in the background, you are seeing the first training session, now the second training session of many that are going to follow in this episode because we've gone through basically a month and a half. Uh, we've got a lot of training sessions to go through. Uh, James Bree, Samet Schenkevel, the Youth Academy graduate from Holland, who's a centre-back. Uh, Naby Keita, Alban Lafont, and Adam Luckman are being trained at the moment. The only bit of growth from those two slots was Samet Schenkevel going up to 69 overall. He's 16 years of age. So regrettably... 
he won't grow on his physicals anymore, um, but he is a very solid centre-back, so you might see him featuring quite a lot more in played games. But uh, now it's time for a simmed game at home against Norwich. I just didn't feel the need to play this one. But actually, Norwich have taken the lead after just 20 minutes. Mali, the uh, Norwich striker, giving them the lead uh, in the first half and then doubling their lead later on in the first half. So a double, a brace from Mali. 20 minutes apart for both goals. Jamal Asels, unfortunately, has picked up a knock uh, at the back. So hopefully he's not out for too long. Bartos Kapuska gave us some hope for a moment, but uh, Martin Olsen then cancelled that out. So we lose at home to Norwich, a team who are probably uh, looking to stay away from relegation this season. We lose 3-1 at home, so not a very good result at all. But now it's time for a second sim game of today's episode, and of course the third uh, game in this episode overall. And we are away against Swansea. We've taken the lead, much better start this game. After just one minute, the smiley assassin from Turkey being Oil Chan. Uh, Oil Khan, I'm not entirely sure how you actually pronounce it realistically. I think it is Oil Chan. I'm sure I got a comment saying I was pronouncing it right. Uh, he gave us the lead after just a minute. Kapuska then doubled our lead in the 33rd. Khan Ihan then got a second yellow. So he's off. We're down to 10 men. Jack Court giving Swansea some hope, but Mikel Dooland has ended that Swansea hope with uh, just 22 minutes to go and the exact same scoreline as we just had. It's a 3 1 win for the away team. Th this time, thankfully, though. It is us. I would have expected us really to drop points away against Swansea and beat Norwich at home. But whatever. It's a win and a loss. It's what I expected out of those two games. It doesn't really matter what way they come. So a 3-1 uh, loss and then a 3-1 win. Back to training. Bit of growth in terms of attributes for James Bree. But a growth... Uh, in terms of overall from Adamola Luckman. Uh, we're training his passing because passing is very important on this game, as I've found out so far. So basically, anyone in any position has to have decent passing. But once we've got that up a little bit, we'll obviously train Luckman on his uh, shooting, or Luckman, sorry, on his shooting as well. But in the background, also some growth for Alban Lafont, who's got up from 76 to 77 overall with that OP goalkeeping training. And Abby Cater is also very close to going up to an overall. He's a smidgen. Uh, away from 75. But nevertheless, now it is time for the second play game of today's episode against Manchester City, who actually have the best defensive uh, team in the in the league. So the best defence, obviously, in the league. Only six goals conceded here is the team that we are going to use to try and break them down. Uh, the only real change is Donovan Daniels, who comes in for James Bree. But apart from that, I think the, the squad is basically the same. I actually know. Uh, Jason Pierce is in for the suspended Khan Ihan. After just three minutes, though, City are probing. Fabian Delph uh, is on the ball. Got to watch out for the pass in the middle there. It's Fernando. No one is marking him. And the Brazilian defensive midfielder finds himself in acres of space, basically sat on the edge of the six-yard bar. I mean, how, how can you physically be left alone by the centre-backs in that position in the box? Awful from Jamal Asels and Jason Pierce, who isn't really selling himself to me. Uh, after coming in for the suspended car, and I had a chance there for ourselves, but Naby Keita deciding to slide in instead of going for the shot. Normally, I, I suppose you'd expect that from a defensive midfielder, but a corner coming in from Doolan. It's been hit by Oil Chan. It's deflected onto the crossbar, and we're getting closer. We're certainly getting closer. Andre Gray now finding Donovan Daniels in an advanced position, but he doesn't really have the finishing capabilities to finish it off. Now, Reese James finding Andre Gray. The save from Willie Caballero, and it's followed up by Gray himself, but he's unfortunately offside on the 40-minute mark. We, though, are getting closer to that equalising goal. But we have got to watch out for that sucker punch from Manchester City. De Bruyne swinging the ball into the box. It should be Alban Lafont. But again, a mistake has allowed a City player to score. And this time, it's Thomas Muller. I don't think there's ever been a FIFA save in history where Thomas Muller hasn't, saved for, hasn't signed sorry, for Manchester City. So, uh, yeah, realistic transfers. But nevertheless, Alban Lafont punch punching Thomas Muller in the face. But not exactly punching the ball. Very disappointing mistake from the goalkeeper, who's been so good uh, recently. He was fantastic when he was on loan. But ever since we bought him permanently, he hasn't reached the heights, really, of where he was before. Naby Keita and Kapuski getting 7.2s. Good ratings for them. Jason Pierce was absolutely woeful at the back, so he won't be getting anywhere near the starting eleven for quite some time. But we do lose the game 2-0. So a very up-and-down episode, much like last episode, realistically. A game on the balance of play that we probably deserve to win in terms of stats. But realistically, uh, the City, I suppose, had the better chances. But uh, Naby Keita, though, in better news, going up to a 75 overall uh, in the background in training and we're also expecting some growth here for the Swedish Youth Academy graduate Philip Bolden who is I think 17 at this point or 18 and he is now up to 71 so a very solid defensive midfielder in terms of backup now 
to Naby Keita. He is growing very, very well indeed. Jamal Lascelles and Alban Lafont, amongst the others, being trained at the moment. But now it's time for the final game of today's episode, and it is a simmed game. As I said, there will be more played games in future. It was just because of the nature of this episode in terms of fixtures. And we're away against Everton. Bad start, though, for us as Mikel Dooland has got injured and Rico Henry has come on to replace him. Ross Barkley actually giving Everton the lead, but thankfully Andre Gray equalises five minutes later despite us losing Mikel Doolan in that first half. Uh, Philip Bolden is on to replace Naby Keita as a substitute, and Reese James has actually given us the lead after 58 minutes. If we can hold on to this, this will be a very solid away win again. It seems as if our away form is much better than our home form, and in the end, we do hold on. Samet Schenkevel, the Youth Academy graduate, coming on uh, for a bit of experience as well. Same as Rico Henry and Philip Bolden, so that's nice of the simulated game to do. But we win again away from home 2-1, so our away form is literally better than our home form, I think, throughout this entire season, certainly this episode. Uh, anyway, but here you can see the, squ uh, the squad, the, uh, the table at the end of today's episode. Chelsea are four points clear of City, and it's Everton, Arsenal, and ourselves still in fifth. Very respectable, uh, very solid start to the season. Leicester, who were also promoted, uh, along with us from the Championship, they're sat up in seventh. So it's been very good for the promoted sides, realistically. But that is about it from me today. I apologise about the fact that this video is quite short. It's just the nature of the amount of games that we played. There'll be more in terms of uh, gameplay action next episode, I can assure you. And I also apologise if my commentary hasn't been that flowing or very good. I'm quite ill at the moment, hence why my upload schedule hasn't been fantastic over the last three or four days. It's very hard to commentate and also bring myself to record stuff when I just want to sleep. So um, <laughs> I, I apologise for that. I hope you guys understand. Nevertheless, if you did enjoy this video, feel free to hit the likes button. Subscribe if you're new around here as well and comment about enjoying the video if you enjoyed it that much. But it's been a pleasure ranting you guys today. Have a great day, enjoy yourselves, and goodbye. No, that's not me. Act like a waste man, that's not